All right, assignment two, our next project is to composite an original fantasy creature out of at least five different creature parts. You can always find the assignment sheet within our course in Canvas. Come on, computer. And it will just be a one page breakdown of it. You saw it briefly there. <laughs> and now your challenge is how are you going to um, envision what creature you want? Well, what I want you to do is actually look on that assignment sheet and you will have a Pokédex link. Or you can use your own Pokédex, right? But I want you to then think of a, a Pokémon shape. Just think of the silhouette and then think how you would sketch that in terms of its basic shapes and in terms of where its joints are. Really thinking of getting that angle on the creature correct. Because if you just design it from your head, they're going to be very flat. They're not going to have the dimension and the silhouette that we want. So this is what you will bring next class. Basically, um, a Pokemon shape that you have drawn and then thought about what real world creatures can we find reference for to start fleshing it out. And we want to end up with something that brings them all together. So though we are rushed, I will try to quickly get, get started on it. So I'm thinking of my environment, right? I have this, this weird, really colorful, gaseous planet with, with a tree. <laughs> so if I go to a Pokédex, I'm just thinking what kind of silhouette would make sense? Do I want something that flies? Do I want something that walks? Do I want something that's rock-based? Uh, do I want something spindly and long or something glumpy? or something intimidating. There's just so many different ways I can go. And it's not that we're gonna be making our versions of a, of a Pokemon. Instead, oh, this one look, just looks cool. We're gonna be inspired by how these things work. So this is a really tiny little image. I'm gonna zoom in. We're gonna deal with resolution and then I'm gonna do a screen grab of it. And that will be my inspiration. Right. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of different Pokemon. Some are plants, some are underwater. I think there are even space ones and alien ones. So this is just a starting point for you to get inspired. Then you're going to go right to your sketchbook. And the main reason I have you start with a Pokemon is I want you to try to avoid going humanoid. I want you to think about all the different kinds of shapes and silhouettes that could be made. And of course, I think some are designed better than others. Like this one's actually pretty cool. I might go for this one instead. I don't remember this one. And some might really suggest certain animals, like that suggests a gecko to me. But then if I go to a sketchbook, and I'll do it digitally just so you can see. Come on. And then if I look at the Pokemon I'm inspired by, again, doesn't matter what resolution it is. Just trying to open a sketchbook here. I need to restart my computer, but I don't want to take up that time right now. We're going to sketch it, and we're going to sketch it from the, the same angle, the same point of view that the Pokédex gives us. Because Dr. Oak, he knows what he's doing. And so you need that angle to really showcase the creature. We don't want it flat from the front, and we don't want it flat from the side. And what's amazing about Pokémon is every silhouette works really well. So I'll just show you really quickly before I sketch it. If I adjust the color for that and just make it a shadow. Oh, my computer's going too slow. But if I take the exposure way down, up the contrast, so it's just basically a shadow, right? You already get a sense of where the head is what that presence is, how it lives close to the ground, its weight, 
all of that is just from the silhouette. You know, much like your, your landscape was already kind of given to you as just shapes. And the details don't matter as much. So if you start with strong shapes, you're in, you're in a, a good position. Okay, so in my sketchbook now, all I'm going to do is take, and you can uh, sketch it any way you like, but you do want to reference those angles. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the head as just a basic shape. And then I'm going to find where the eye line is. And then I'm going to find where the spine is. Right. And that shows me with the spine, that shows me where the back hips are at the base of the spine. And then it's up to me if I want this creature to have a tail or not. Right. And then you're going to find on the spine where the collarbone is that connects the front legs. And notice I'm drawing through it like it's an x-ray. And then I can decide, well, how long are the, the upper arms? How long are the forearms? And I'm basically trying to create the skeleton of this creature. And it's okay with me if you want to trace it. If you have tracing paper and want to do that, or if you change it a little bit doing it freehand, as long as you understand where these components are. And you can change their proportions. Now, just because he has bones on his back, it doesn't mean I need bones on the back of mine, but I might play with some, some fins or something along the ridge. And I can even combine two Pokemon. So if I like the little roughs around the eyes here, I can combine that into the design of this. And I can even add that tail in but it has to flow off of that spine. So once I have that kind of sketch, then I start thinking, okay, that's the skeleton in red. And you don't need to sketch in different colors, but you want to separate out what are the bones, which, what is the building material, and then what's the, um, the kind of textures and finishing elements. And I'll think, okay, well, this tail obviously feels like it should come from a gecko or something, but maybe I want to go for a fern. Anything living that I can find good reference for might work. Come on. Yep. I want you to start with an inspiration of a Pokemon and then modify it from there, just so I know you have a good silhouette to kind of inspire it. And it also helps you to think of your environment and what what would make sense for it. But I could decide to make these like really tiny spindly legs or really big rhinoceros legs and start thinking and even making notes about which reference might make sense. So maybe um, like alligator legs. I'm thinking a fern. I'm thinking maybe some um, succulents. For some of these spikes. So think about that, play with that in your sketchbook, and then we'll and start collecting reference if you can. And we want this reference to be six megapixels or bigger. And then we'll start uh, putting it all together next class. Just like we did with your with your landscapes. We are going to be sketching in our sketchbook, but um, mm -hmm. you have a way to scan it into the computer and put it on here. So we're going to do it the same way we did with those sketches. We'll just do a quick uh, photograph of it for our computer, and then we'll map our parts to our sketch. But we might also warp our sketch a little bit to be more compelling, which we weren't able to do with our landscapes because we were matching existing postcards. OK. So I will save this sketch, and then next time we'll, we'll build on top of it.